Hello everybody, this is Scott from DLXSession.com. Today I want to be showing you how to properly set up Cloudflare for your website. Um, I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you the proper performance settings for it and I'll show you how to get your website up and running. The main thing to do is we're going to start off in the DNS settings. Come over to the DNS settings and enable the IPv6 compatibility. This will solve a lot of it, potential issues with displaying content and it will allow your server to uh, enable IP version 6 as opposed to only IPv4. While most servers already support it, some legacy and random hosts out there probably don't. From here, I'm going to explain the crypto section. Crypto is really only for if you have an SSL on your website. Every website that uses Cloudflare will get a flexible SSL, which essentially means you have an SSL connection to their server and their resources but not to your actual server. So it's going to display broken content if someone tries to serve it over SSL. The next thing we have is the firewall. The firewall is where you'll be able to configure your, your security level. And the best thing to do is to enable it in high, right off the bat, and then to uh, put a challenge pass. So they have to take a challenge like a CAPTCHA or it has to be challenged by Cloudflare and I always keep it at the default for 15 minutes so they'll have to retake it again if they're still on the website. From there you can go to the speed section and in the speed section is where things will get interesting. I always auto minify JavaScript, CSS, and HTML even if I'm using something like auto optimize or something like W3 Total Cache and the reason for this is, is it's an additional compression and it's also very light. Cloudflare compression is very light. It probably will break absolutely nothing. Though some things that it will do though is clean up extra comments that maybe in HTML, CSS, or JavaScript that served. But for the most part, you won't see any actual compression that can break anything. The next thing we're going to do is you're going to come down to the rocket loader. I typically always set the rocket loader to automatic, and then I'm just able to change it by disabling it for certain things. If there's a script that isn't working or is having issues, you just have to put the data CF async equals false tag in front of the source attribute and it will automatically be set to be ignored by the rocket loader. If you put this in the wrong location though, it clearly will not work. Caching. Caching has, n there isn't a whole lot of things you can really do here if you're on the free plan but there's a lot of plans for enterprise that they've been adding uh, the most important thing though is make sure you have always online activated and to make sure that the caching level is set to standard if you set it to ignore query strings it means some content that is you know, got a basic example right here um, if you have standard, it delivers a different resource for the query string. Typically, we always remove the query strings from our content, so this shouldn't really matter. In fact, if you follow my little plugin that I have, it should remove your query strings automatically for your resources to avoid such issues from happening. But sometimes, it might still happen. But you now you should have it set to the standard. Page rules, no matter what anyone tells you on a WordPress site, are ultimately useless. It already excludes the WordPress parts of the website. It knows what not to cache and optimize. So there's no real need to mess with these settings. Traffic doesn't really do much. It just stops um, potential issues, like someone going, like, these are challenged and they're going to a URL that doesn't even point anywhere. So they were clearly challenged and most of these were a challenge. Whether they passed or not, who knows. Um, the scrape shield. Um, I always enable email, uh, email address uh, obfuscation, which simply means to a bot that it will make no sense. But to, a, but to do it, it will only be applied in certain circumstances. It will work for email address with a bind type of text, HTML. Or will not work for email address inside certain conditional attributes, tags. And for the most part, if you have this enabled and you're publicly displaying an email on the website, you should be safe. Server side excludes I enable. As we can see, I, I haven't 
I don't really use this. Um, but in theory, you could. You could use this. You may not see conditional con comments in your content when served by Cloudflare. Certain Cloudflare features like HTML minification will remove additional comments. Blah, 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 blah. Essentially, you'll never use this. It's not really a performance thing, but it can improve the security in a different manner. For the most part, though, I just ignore it. There's nothing in the last tab as it's only for pro users. And as for the apps, there are very few apps that I find useful. The only ones that I actually bother to use are maybe like Google Webmasters, um, but more particularly the Scrape Shield. Email obfuscation, page content con page content protection I don't really use. Actually, here, we'll see where this goes. Scrape Shield report. We'll see if anyone's taken any of my content. Most likely, no, but it'll be interesting. Scrape Shield's useful for more of an editorial or a news site if you're on something like an arcade or something else. Let's see, you shouldn't notice any major difference. Email obfuscation again. Um, never block Pinterest and don't do the hot link protection because it doesn't really benefit you much. Smart errors can be enabled, which will, it's like an improved 404 page. The uh, smart errors will give them a 404 page with like least recent posts or interesting content that they may have been searching for, and it'll give them a search bar. The only downside is it gives you the giant Cloudflare logo and it's clearly a Cloudflare page, so it doesn't, it kind of breaks the immersion of your website. As for the rest of these, I have found no real use. Um, oops. I've simply just not found any use for a lot of these extra ones. But it's a really great tool there's a lot that can be done. It can greatly improve the load time. Some things that people say are broken, like the rocket loaded, the chances are is it's not broken. Um, while it still says it's a beta feature, it's not a beta feature. It's been around for years. It's only beta because it's still, it's not, you can turn on and it will always work kind of deal. And that's what Cloudflare always aims for, is if you turn it on, it should work. The rocket loader works by basically, you could say, a virtual browser. What it does is it takes all your JavaScript directly where it is on the page, inline JavaScript, um, external JavaScript, combined JavaScript, and it gives it the rocket script tag, which is essentially a nice way of saying it will be loaded in an asynchronous fashion, which means all that inline JavaScript will not be loaded until the rest of the page is done. And then it will uh, load that JavaScript in the exact same order that it's found on the page. This matters because what happens is if you have things like sliders that require a jQuery. A common issue is someone will use jQuery and you can't move it to the, most of the times you can't move it to the footer. Because if you do, it'll break sliders and other things that are dependent on it. So what you can do is you can enable the rocket script and the rocket script will say, okay, we can get around that and it'll enable it for all the JavaScript and it will load everything with async. And then it'll say, okay, J's query was loaded with async and now it's, it's almost like the deferred. It's almost like uh, adding defer to your, all of your JavaScript. Defer respects the uh, like way that the JavaScript was loaded on the page. So it'll say, okay, and load the J query and then, ooh, there is the code for your slider and then it will continue to follow down in that same fashion, which is why it gets the term of a virtual browser. It has been known to break things. Uh, some ad networks that are lower quality or ad networks that are just not, had to, do not have the infrastructure of something like AdSense will break. Sometimes um, certain plugins don't play nice with it. Um, it's typically a good thing to run in conjunction with auto optimize which I showed in another video and even though it pulls all the JavaScript inline it's still useful for JavaScript that's external that can't be pulled 
So this is a great way to get around Facebook causing an issue. Facebook widgets are slow. They cause performance issues, and there's no real way to get around it because you can't combine the JavaScript. But Rocket scripts that, but the Rocket Loader says, oh, we'll take that, including things like stumble upon and Twitter and all those other sharing buttons as well. They'll all be loaded with async, and they'll all still work because of the way that Rocket Script handles them. You can almost think of it taking all of the JavaScript and combining it in a way and then loading it in the same order, which is very similar to what auto-optimize does. It takes all the JavaScript in the order that it appears on the page, inline or not, and then puts it in the same place that it would be in the file. And then it defers it and puts it in the footer. Therefore, there shouldn't be any dependency issues. It's a great tool. Everybody should be using it. I don't know why some people aren't. Uh, some people say that they don't want to change the name servers, which the name servers are basically a validator for your website's name. It's really the easiest way to think of it. Um, no security issues. Uh, I've used it on every website and every website I've worked on. Great performance tool. Greatly improves load time. And there's a lot more behind this product that most people are not really aware of. If you have the money and you're looking for a paid CDN, I would really actually consider looking at the pro version of this. You won't be using enterprise level security and caching modules like this. However, there's still quite a bit that you can look at. The Railgun is offered through a lot of a lot of partners. Railgun is a good way to accelerate like real-time content stuff that's updating frequently. Um, Mirage is a tool that improves the images and it basically think of it almost like compresses them, but it also improves the load time for them on mobile. Um, it also uses like a, fr a form of async, I believe, where replace the image with low resolution placeholders. It's basically the process of lazy loading. And combine multiple individual network requests for images into a single network request, which essentially means that it's almost like all those images are one request. It's basically the concept of using... Um, CSS sprites, where you have multiple images and you're calling them with CSS, it's almost like that. It doesn't require as many HTTP requests, which is what the point of using a CSS sprite is, and it loads them with async. I shouldn't say async, but it loads them with lazy loading. Um, you don't, but for 99.99% .99 of the websites in the internet, you will not be using these features. They're for enterprise level websites that are going to be, that are distributing content in a way that's just not normal. Or not the norm for most people. Um, other than that, it's a really, really good tool. Um, I really do consider everybody using it. If you're not running any form of CDN on your website, you really should looking into implementing Cloudflare. It's great because it makes the website safer, it makes it smarter, and it makes it faster. So thank you very much for watching. Please stay tuned for the next video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, put them below and I'll make sure to answer them. And I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.